How many guys from LA did you bring with you to BMF? I mean, I can't really count out, but the main ones, man, you had Bull and his brother Big Cuz. Then you had Baby Blue, you had uh, uh, the twins, the two twins. They was in school with Baby Blue, but they still from LA. Um, you had uh, Llewellyn came out, Big Lou from One I Know. He was out for a while. The nigga ST was out from Delamo for a while with us. Um, you got the uh, 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 oh, G. Wee from the Nellis was out with us. Uh, 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 Red Rags from the West Coast, from Bompton. You know what I'm saying? With the Crips, like we was all moving together. You know what I'm saying? But these are people I've been knowing since I was a kid. You know, everybody I just mentioned, nigga, I've been known since I was in the sandbox. And this was the crew of that was moving around and moving Meech around when he wasn't with T and it wasn't the Detroit, all the Detroit peoples with T and Meech had this new crew <coughs> that T and them didn't like. We was kicking ass and taking names. Let them tell it. We was just making too much noise, bringing too much attention in Atlanta. But all we was doing was promoting a record label, bro, like anybody else. We, it wasn't like we was on street corners and selling crack and then putting up a billboard like, yeah, nigga, we over here in Boulevard selling crack all day. Here go the billboard, the police. It wasn't that. It was BMF Entertainment, this mixtape is coming, we still here, or whatever, whatever is coming. You know what I'm saying? It was just marketing and promotion and branding of BMF Entertainment. And no matter that people got it and it's been branded, they still don't look back and accredit me for the shit. Like, bro, that was branding the shit out that shit. <laughs> he was on every DVD, bro. Oh, cause back then it wasn't this. This right now, Cam Capone, all these academics and all these. No jump or whack one. All this shit is what you get your news from is what's popping. It's how you know shit. Back then it was the DVDs. How you seen who was in the street popping. You used to pull up in the nigga hood. Everybody got guns. It's 50 outside. You feel what I'm saying? It, it was that going on back then in that day. In my little DVD days. So that was our internet. And I was nigga forefront of that shit. I was at, you know, it was a lot of at the forefront. East coast, west coast, down south. Like everybody was participating, but I was one of the in that. DVD shit, the show, like, this is what these niggas doing, boy, these niggas out here for real. I was showing that BMF shit we was doing. Now, everybody that don't know, bro, I would, I would entice people to go watch the Raw Report, bro. That's one of the close to, even though Meech wasn't there, he got his, his what's the name at the beginning of it, because I made sure during them times that Meech was always visible. That was me putting Meech on them cameras, having them people go film Meech. I don't know Meech to be all over cameras and shit before he met Blue Da Vinci. Maybe pictures in a nightclub or something, but what's up? How did bringing Bloods and Crips to BMF change BMF? Uh, I mean, I don't think it changed it. It was just the homies, bro. It didn't matter if you was a Blood or Crip. It was from New York. It was from Georgia. It was from everywhere that was part of BMF. Right here in Florida. It was people from a lot of places. We just was cripping, bro. See, before I was saying BMF, I had the Crips around. It was still stomping ground. My homies was coming around while I was doing my little music shit, stomping ground, started to come around, and we were just cripping. Then we started BMF as a record label. T wasn't a part of it. T and them was gone. They were doing 263. They started their own shit to brand. Me and Meech and them stayed in Atlanta. T and them stayed in LA. And then that's when the BMF shit took off like that. But that's what Meech then was saying, man, them is doing too much. They got billboards. They doing this. They doing that. That's why they were saying that, because it wasn't together no more. t -Nim was doing that, and we was doing BMF Entertainment. Yeah, I think you said at one point uh, T didn't even want to claim BMF no more, or he wasn't nah, he claiming still BMF don't. anymore? He only do it to this day because he's a part of that history. He helped create that history. So he's just a part of it. So he going to take his piece of what he's a part of, but he, they don't. They got 263, bro. They got their own branding, their weed companies. They had billboards in Detroit recently of 263, which is BMF on your phone dial. It's a tattoo I've been had on my arm since 2000 and whatever, right here on this gun. It's a 263. That, you know, I'm from L.A. In L.A., we use the phone dial for a lot of our coding and shit, like 187, like, you know what I'm saying, 143, me, I love you. Different shit on the phone. We'll use the phone as the code for what we're saying, and 263 is BMF. It's the alphabet, BMF. So I put that shit on this gun because I was tired of putting BMF every single where I was putting it on my gun. They adopted that shit, turned it into their whole squad. So 
T didn't want to do hip hop. He wanted to do more R and B. R and B type shit. Yeah, he more laid back and chill, like want a cigar and be in the back smoking on a cigar, like sugar or something. But he wanted to do R and B. He didn't want to be all in the club jumping around and all with the hip hop and all these. And shit. He he wasn't on that. T was laid back, more laid back. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.